Today I'm working on a Honda 450R going plus three on the swing arm. This one's going to be a lot different than the Yamahas because the Yamahas I can just weld in a block, aluminum block. And it's very simple. You just cut right behind on the Yamahas and then you can weld in a block, cap everything off. It works pretty good. Now on the Honda 450 you have this that goes on to the brakes. So there's this tab right here. I cut right behind the eyelet. Why I cut there is so you don't have to change anything. You don't have to change your shock. The only thing you have to change is your chain. And if this is too far, which it is, it's three inch, your, your brake cable won't reach. So you have to get a new brake cable. If it was two inch, I'm pretty sure a two inch would fit. It would be stretching it, but it would work. But you don't have to mess with your shock or anything. The only downfall is it puts a lot of pressure on your shock and you have to tighten up your shock. <coughs> So I cut right past the shock mount. As you can see, we have this in a way. So I'm not gonna do my block where I can butt it up here after I bevel this and weld it up. I just don't think that's gonna work right. Now my idea, and some people might disagree, but I'm gonna make sure this is gonna work. I'm gonna build the block in sections. So I'm gonna cut this out to fit around this stud and then I'm gonna weld all that on there and then I'll have to weld the other piece on there it's a lot of welding and hopefully it doesn't look too bad when I'm done and I'm pretty sure it's gonna hold when I'm done so now I completed half the box that goes on the carrier as it goes over that shaft. So now I completed half my block, my three inch block, to fit on the carrier. I don't think it's necessary to weld in here because it wasn't like that stock, but I'm definitely gonna weld the inside of this to make it a lot stronger. And I welded on the inside of this since I did not go with tubing and I welded the outside. So in theory, that's going to fit in there. And that's going to fit right there. And you got a plus three. Now I've finished enclosing the box here that goes on to the carrier. So now that box is done, now I need to attach it to the rest of the swing arm. So I'm at the point where I need to prep this so I can weld this to the block. And really measure it out and clamp it up and make sure it's true. Okay, now I got the block welded in, lined up. This is the bottom here. And what I'm going to do, this is probably good enough how it is, but for insurance, I'm going to put a strip on here. For a backbone. So here's the block welded on. So this is the swing arm finished. So if you trust your welding, you can do this method. Do the block if you can. The way I did it was to get around this stud right here. So I had to do all that. So there's my plus three. I got an extra plate in the back for support. I haven't had one of these break yet on me, so hopefully this works. It doesn't look the best. Make sure you have all the right equipment also. I prefer a MIG spool gun. So I'm running the spool gun off my Miller 180. I'm running straight argon, not helium. I don't do thick enough aluminum to justify to have helium. So I used the alloy 5356. That's what I built the swing arm with. And I just ran out on the back plate. I 
running a 40-43 alloy and I prefer this having it weld so much better. It's not as strong as this. I don't think we're going to have a situation for this because I built other swing arms with this alloy. Hope you enjoyed my video on a plus three extension swing arm for a Honda 450. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below and I'll try to get back to you and have the best answer possible.